Welcome to Powered by Her, exploring the stories of how area women power their business. Hear from the growing network of female entrepreneurs of the Upper Cumberland with your host, Tiffany Anton, director at the Biz Foundry. Powered by Her starts now. Hello, you're listening to Powered by Her. I'm Tiffany Anton with the Biz Foundry in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. Today, I'm very excited to welcome Patty Purdy. Hello. Hi, Patty. How are you? Great. How are you? Excellent. Um, so you are you have kind of a different entrepreneurial journey. So why don't you explain your um, role in entrepreneurship? OK, well, I actually started at a very young age as entrepreneur. Um, a lot of people don't know this, um, but my background, but I was a dancer. I danced for 20 years and um, I actually taught dance as an after school program at a private school. And I had built up such a large um, following of students that I actually had somebody approach me and say, hey, you should open your own studio. Um, so I did at the age of 25. Um it was at quite a unique studio. Um, I didn't want just dance there. I wanted to offer like a variety. So I also offered like voice and drama and piano. So, um, and I did it, I had called it Studio North in the thoughts of I could expand it, you know, Studio South or East. So even at a really young age, I already had that that concept and that um, enthusiasm to be an entrepreneur. That's so young at 25 to open your own place and be running everything yeah were you teaching dance as well at that time yeah well at the private school and I also was a pre-k teacher at the private school so it was it was quite a lot so opening in a studio was your side hustle it was my side hustle <laughs> it was that took a lot of grit to to work at it did for a side hustle but in your 20s you know it's fun to to go because <laughs> I didn't have children yet then so yeah. I was going so so in the in the next twenty years of your life, what did you do? You just aged me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so what do we do? Um, you know, so you have this dance studio. Yes. You're teaching on the side. Yes. What? What? How long? How long did you have that dance studio? So I ended up closing it once I got pregnant with my daughter Shelby Brooke. Um, I had decided then that, um, and I had it for a few years, but I decided at that time um, that motherhood was something I'd really dreamed about, and so um, I, you know, had my last recital. It was brilliant and grand um lots of tutus and lots of toddlers glitter? and um Was there glitter? of course <laughs> of course i love glitter um and so you know i closed the doors on studio north um and then i started you know having children um and i worked for a before and after school program um for the state and um after you know starting to go down that road i went to the corporate world and um i left before and after school programs went into a corporate world um, management level and um, I was introduced to the world of seminars and um, you probably seen them back in the early 80s it became popular in 90s um, you'd see a late night infomercial that would tell you hey I can teach you how to make money in real estate or the stock market or business call this 1-800 number and um, a seminar will be in your town soon. So I walked into that world and that really opened my eyes um, to entrepreneurship on so many levels. So you were working in the corporate world for how long? Ooh, probably 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And now you're kind of doing a lot that doesn't have to do with the corporate world. What skills did you learn from the corporate world that you can take into entrepreneurship? Um, the skills that I learned um, was um, data, numbers. Numbers don't lie. And learning how to, you know, record things, keep track of things, and um, set your skill set based on numbers. So I am going to for fast forward a few years to 2019. Oh. Um, and so tell me what you're doing now in the world of entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, right now, I'm actually um, doing business mentoring and public relations. Um, so you are the brains and the brawn behind entrepreneurs at this point, a little bit. And I love it. Yeah. I really, really love it. I'm not a front person, but I'm the person behind the scenes that's kicking butt. Yeah. Like, I love making connections. Um, I love to engage. Um, I love seeing a product or a visual come to life. Um, and I like to be the one that makes it happen, you know? Yeah, that that's 
that's exciting to be able to pursue your passion and be, and give back what what means something to you. Yeah, absolutely. In case you're just tuning in, you're listening to Powered by Her in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I'm Tiffany Anton, and my guest today is Patty Purdy. Hello. Um, so we were just talking about kind of what your passion is. And yes. so what do you think were the motivating factors to bring you to this point where you realize, OK, I don't need to own my own business. I've done the studio thing. I've done the corporate world. I want to help people be the best them they can be. So what do you think brought you to this decision to know your strength? Um, my children. I think that that's my children. I think as a mother, you are fueled, um, and not all mothers, but myself, I'm really fueled by being, setting a great example for my children. And that, you know, anything is possible if you work hard. You know, things are not just going to be handed to you. Do you think that you feel a little bit like these entrepreneurs that you work with are, you can mother them a little bit. You said early on that you felt like motherhood was your calling and you felt mm-hmm. really passionate about it. So do you kind of get those mothering qualities and, and taking care of your entrepreneurs a little bit? Probably so. And probably if you talk to them, they'll tell you that I'm sort of like a perfectionist or I really pay attention to all the little details, which mothers tend to do. So, yes. And you get disappointed when <laughs> things don't go the right way. Uh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Where over, I mean, you had, like I said, you kind of almost had three, three or four different career paths. Where yes. have you found the emotional support to get to where you are today? Ooh, my children. And I'm repeating that. And I know that probably <laughs> sounds, but they, I, they fuel me. They really, really do like dad. They're like my little cheering section. And, um, they help me. They help me get through my day. I have a brilliant son who has the best humor in the world. And um, if I have a bad day or I feel like I'm not getting anywhere for some reason, he's in tune to that. And he'll either make me laugh or give me encouraging words. So I'm going to yeah. ask you a question that maybe the answer can't be your children. Where did you get the, the guidance professionally to mm-hmm. know how to what events, what PR kind of marketing wise um, were going to work, what weren't going to work? You can't Ooh, say your children on that one. No, <laughs> um, I'm not going to say it was a person per se, but I'm going to say it's my intuition. I and I think that's something that comes from um, a, being raised by a line of strong women. Um, you know, I was raised um, just to go for it and to listen to your intuition. And I think that's what I've go, gone for. I, I haven't I can't say I had a mentor per se, Um because I've always been in a situation where I've had to do it myself. And so I've just always really dug deep and just pushed forward. Any training that you've gone through that really made you feel like you? Um, I mean, other than college, but in college, I studied early childhood development. You know, yeah. um, honestly, it was working at the seminar company. It really opened my eyes to so many things. Like I was hired in as the customer service manager, of course, because. I'm a talker and I like to have fun and I'm always pleasant, you know, supposedly. (laughs) And um, but while I was there, um, you know, I started to meet people and learn about, like I said, the seminar world, the sales end of it. I'm traveling a lot, meeting different people, meeting, you know, speakers. And so doing that, that really raised my skill level. So you said that you've been raised by a strong uh, a line of strong women. So what one trait would you pick from your mother? That would make have shaped you to be who you are today. She um, always used to tell me, don't look back, always go forward. She always said, you know, the past is in the past. Push forward. And so um, that's exactly what I do. I think that that is so true. The past can really weigh you down and make life so much heavier than to just keep um, a, a good friend of mine mentioned that uh, your front window of your car is much bigger than your rear view mind- window. Right. And and I've just taken that in with me in life. You yeah. Know? That's very true. Yeah. What do you think other women out there need to know about starting a business or, or what do you tell your early entrepreneurs when they're kind of just starting out? What What's your number one piece of advice for them? You got to work. You got to work it. It doesn't just happen by luck. You have to work it. You have to put the time in. Um, You need to do your research, too. You need to know your market, um, what's going on around you. Um, 
also one of my focuses um, has always been is wherever you start, build it there first. Build a really solid, good foundation um, where you're at and then expand. A lot of people try to expand right off the bat. And then when they don't get the response that they want, they get so disappointed. So work, you know, your circle small at first and then grow. So can you tell me, so you, you've kind of done the entrepreneur yourself Mm -hmm. and, and what you're doing is entrepreneurship. You have your own business that you're advising people in and and you're a public relations specialist, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so what's the difference? What between owning your own studio back in the day where you had to know how to do payroll and you had to know how to do, uh, marketing for your own self or you're advising somebody? What are the differences? What's better? What's worse? So, well, I think if to go back a little bit, the way this all came about was, um, you know, I took a position last year as executive director of a nonprofit um, and I realized that um, I needed something else. I ne- I knew I needed to do something um Other than that position, because I have a child in college that's making me broke at this moment. So it was just by chance I sort of fell into this situation. It was not planned where the studio was very planned. It was something I had done for many years. It was a passion. And um, I just I always had dreamed of having a studio. What I'm doing now fell fell into my laps it it found me so i think my purpose now is just a little bit different because i feel like there's this is a calling there's a reason why i'm doing it now and and i have a purpose where before it was just something i had dreamed of um but now i have a a true purpose and go ahead do you think it was kind of like you know a lot of times people will say oh you're good at math and science you should be an engineer and then people get into engineering and they hate it because right. it's like, well, that's not their passion. Right. And so you did the dance studio because it's like you're a dancer. You're good at it. Yeah. Open the studio. Yeah. And now you really found your true calling of what really sets your heart on fire and what you're really good at. What yeah. you can tap into your strength. It's like connecting the dots. Like I can literally go back through from, like I said, in the very beginning of starting a dance studio through all the different employment and jobs, all the different corporations I've worked with or projects I've done and how it's all sort of coming like full circle. And um, it's sort of exciting. It really is. So I'm going to take it down for a second. Okay. And tell me about a time that was really difficult in, in either doing public relations or or even owning your own dance studio, um, a time that was really difficult for you to to keep going. So, um, well, I would say this year. This year has been really difficult for me. I think a lot of times um, people assume because you have a smile on your face and you're pleasant that everything's perfect. Um, and it's not. This year has been a true struggle. I mean, um, I was, you know, married for 20 some years, um, found out I wasn't going to be married. Not that I knew that. And then, you know, I had to rebuild. And, um, and so not every day is, is great. And some days have been hard. And so um, I just keep pushing forward. And like I said, this has fallen in my lap. And I just think there's a reason for this. And I just keep pushing forward. What do you what do you find in yourself that Aside from your kids. Yes. <laughs> what in yourself makes you keep pushing forward? I love seeing results. I'm a, I'm very competitive. And so I love seeing results. And I love to see people happy. Like I am that crazy person when I'm on social media and I see somebody's, you know, got a new car. Or they want this fabulous trip. I'm the one person that's not jealous. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so awesome for them. And so I just truly am a happy person and I love to see other people happy. So I think with my work, I'm sort of like that, like, you know, when we create something or we're doing something and I see the result and I see happy people and I see the families happy. That's a great feeling for me. Yeah, for sure. You're listening to Powered by Her. We're in the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I'm Tiffany Anton with the Biz Foundry and I have Patty Purdy in here. She's done some PR advising. She owned her own company. She worked in the corporate world for a while. So what's next? You've done a lot of stuff, Patty. Mm-hmm. What? Where are we going? So, um, okay. So many, many moons ago, I'm not going to tell my age since you sort of already <laughs> did. Um, anyways, I created a product and I have put it on the shelf for a really long time. And I think it's time to like dust it off and 
push forward with it. You know, um, I work with so many other people and their products and their businesses. And I'm like, you got to do it yourself. Are you getting, is it contagious a little bit? You're getting it. It sort of is, you know, I want to, I don't know. I just, yeah. It is. Do you want to talk about your product at all? Sure. Okay. So tell me about your product. What do you. So back in 2011, which that quite a while ago, ago. um, I was working at a facility um, and um, I was doing like um, events and marketing for them. And um, it was a rehab nursing home facility. And um, I could not handle the smell, like could not do it. Um, And I felt like such a. A wuss. So I was Googling like, what do, you know, most people do, you know, you know, nursing students or whatever. And um, I kept Googling and, you know, half of them were like, you know, you just get used to it or other things were saying um, Vicks. And I was like, oh, I don't want to use Vicks because people are going to think I'm constantly sick. So I started to look up different um, ideas, like sort of along the lines of Vicks, but I wanted something that had a pleasant smell. Um, and then I, you know, stumbled up you know, upon essential oils. Um, then I took a class. I was really interested. I took a class down in Nashville and learned all the ins and outs of essential oils. And then I started to create like a base that wasn't greasy. Like Vicks is very oily and greasy. So I created a base and, um, and had made my own little tube of my stuff and I put it in my pocket and was going to work and um, one day a nurse saw me do it and um, she asked me what it was and I said oh you know I created this little nose bomb. Were you at least a little embarrassed like extremely (laughs) it's like you know it's like I got busted (laughs) extremely like I'm a wuss and so um, anyways and so she's like what is it and I said well it's the stuff I put under my nose so I can't smell stuff and she's like that's really great stuff bring me some tomorrow I'm like you got it. And from there, everybody kept encouraging me like, you need to make this. You need to go forward. Um, so anyway, so I did. And um, I really perfected it. I mean, it took me two years just to get the right logo. Like, I really put a lot of time, effort, thought into it. And um, in the name of it, so nosy. Um, being from the South, we all can relate to that. Um, no, so, but see, again, no one will admit to it. They just they'd feel busted if they knew. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, and I, you know, I started like most entrepreneurs. I was doing the little markets. I was going to, you know, barn sales back then and selling it. Um, I had started social media page. Um, but then life got in the way. You know, I was pulled um to do different work for some different companies back then. And so, so it just sort of got about, put on the shelves. This is yeah. about 2013-ish, 14? Uh, yeah. yeah. And so you were still in the um, seminar realm at that time? Or? So, yeah. Okay, so you were doing that kind of stuff. And so you this was just a side hustle. It was. It was. And it was put on the shelf. You know, and by then, you know, my kids were, you know, middle school, high school, and your life gets busy yes. during that time. You think it's when they're little. It's not. It's when they're they're older. And so what is going to make you get to that point that you pick that back up and say, OK, I'm going to do this? Well, I'm there. I'm there. I've already started. I've started to, you know, I am, um, you know, times change and you got to revamp some stuff. So what I did in the very initial um, launch of that product, um, I've cr- critiqued it and I've I've changed a couple of things and um, and I. You know, honestly, I was one of those people where I was doing small volume and I had a chance to have large volume and I got scared and I didn't want to fail. And so that fear really held me back. Um, I think with age, circumstance and my life now, I don't have fear anymore. Do you think what do you think it is about women (laughs) that give us? I mean, we 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 do have that fear and probably more so than men. Yeah. Um, But then we have that. Mm, that that grit to just say I'm gonna do this and yeah. I'm gonna prove people like people doubters wrong yeah. haters wrong. So what do you think it is like? Um, yeah, I think it is. I I am. I'm definitely one of those kind of people when somebody turns up their nose or is disappointed or like nah. Yeah, I I'm gonna prove you wrong. It's that competitive edge. It is. It definitely is. And um, you know, and I think too, like the product that I've created. Um, I haven't really seen it out there like and it's sort of funny in the very beginning if I found a product that was like mine or something that could be used like that um, I would buy it and test it and see how mine was different well since then all I have a Ziploc 
baggie of all of them. Since then, I think only three of the products out of 12 are still existing. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, it's my time. So do you think that there was a little bit of you that was scared and thought, well, let me see if these other, I want to see how it goes. And then I'm going to kick it into high drive and go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was circumstance too. You know, you're talking about a product that costs $5 where, you know, it was easier to go, you know, do a consulting job that made, you know, a higher dollar amount and, yeah. you know, you had to pay the bills. So yeah, I went with what was, you know, putting food on the table at the time. Well, and now you have the, the skills to know that you've done some PR, you've done marketing for these other entrepreneurs and their products yeah. and so you kind of have been able to test your skills a little bit with them so you know what's going to work for your own products as well yeah yeah and it's making relationships i think that's the other thing you know um making really good relationships and know you know who's going to support you and who's not you do you know? think that that's a little bit um specific to the upper cumberland region of making relationships oh this great this place is great for that yeah. It definitely is. This this um, community is so unique. Um, how the, if they really like somebody and they like what you're doing, they definitely get behind you and they support it. This is definitely a brilliant place for entrepreneurs. Do you when you plan to launch so nosy? Do you think you'll launch it kind of regionally, or do you think you'll kind of go big? Uh, no, in the very beginning, I'll stay local. You know, definitely test it out. I think you should always, you know. I like to get feedback. I'm really big into questionnaires. Any kind of event that I do or anytime I work with anybody, I always, you know, I ask a thousand questions. I think feedback is really positive. And I think, I think a lot of time is also knowing how to deal with the criticism and negativity that does come back, how to position yourself with that. Um, you know, not everybody's going to like your product, but not everybody likes, you know, chocolate ice cream either. So it's just, you know, what fits you the best, you know, and knowing how to deal with that. Right. Take the good, take, take any sort of feedback, adjust what you think is necessary, but yeah. stay true to yourself. Yeah, for sure. Is, is important. So, um, when, when, when will you know that you've made it like to say I've made it in the world of entrepreneurship? I feel that way right now. Yeah, I do. I really do. I think when I go, you know, I'm at home at night and I, you know, turn off all the lights and I, you know, go, you know, to watch the news and fall asleep, I always feel very accomplished in my day. And what do you think that um, made you, what was our key point or it's just kind of been a gradual over time? No, it, like I said, last year it's being year. faced with, um, you know, being single for the first time in many, many years, not that I knew it was going to happen. It was a total shock. And, you know, I at that time, you know, I mean, I'm not the first one to go through it, but probably the way I dealt with it was very different. Like I didn't, you know, do the what was me, you know, I was more like, all right, buck up, sister. You got to figure this out. I kind of think there's nothing more dangerous than a single mom <laughs> that's going to, you know, get there and get going and say, OK, time to buckle up because we're going. There's well, not, there's no other choice. Well, I think for a, um, for a lot of people, they, they always just thought I was this corporate wife, you know, the woman behind the man type of thing. And, you know, it's just, you know. And I think I've really shocked a lot of people how I've come out swinging and I haven't given up, you know, I'm going to keep pushing forward. So. Somebody told me the other day, everybody loves a comeback story. So, you know, people, even though you might not have them in right next to you, there are people cheering you on from somewhere, somehow, Yeah, you know, because everybody wants that, that underdog to really win. Well, I can totally tell you I was an underdog. Like, it's so weird that I'm doing this podcast because a year ago this week, I didn't even have money in my bank account. I had zero dollars. Like I had, I wasn't even eating. This is the honest to God truth. There was three days that I didn't eat because Bryce, my 18 year old now, was playing soccer and I had to make sure he had enough food to, to play the games, you know? And so, yeah, it was a struggle, but just everything came together in like a two weeks period of time because I didn't give up. I worked and I pushed through and stuff happened. Yeah. It's kind of amazing how the, the pieces just fall into place when they're meant to. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this wouldn't have been the, the, the right thing for you 10, 15 years ago. Mm -mm. You would have thought this crazy. No, I was truly hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was truly hungry for success and food at the time. <laughs> 
You're listening to Powered by Her and the Hints and Oakley Podcast Center. I have Patty Purdy here today, and we've heard lots and lots and lots about her journey of entrepreneurship from the front end to the back end to, you know, a side hustle here and there. So what other things do you have to tell us today, Patty? Ooh, that's a loaded question. I know. Listen, we got a little bit of time. All right. Well, based on what are we talking business, personal, I'm just teasing. I think I've already gone there with everything. No, you know, I definitely am going to speak to women out there, especially um, I am middle age, as you clarified in the very beginning of this interview. <laughs> I'm probably middle age, too. But so. no, 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 you're not. But um, but just never give up on yourself. No matter what, do not give up on yourself. There's you're allowed to cry. Um, and you're allowed to get mad and you're allowed to get frustrated and not everything's going to go your way, but, um, it does turn out okay. You just got to push through it, you know, and not give up. So, yeah, that's, that's great advice. And I think that's great advice, no matter whether you're middle-aged or you're 18 or eight or, you know, well, you know, the reason why I said middle age is it's sort of weird. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard that, like when you buy a new car and say you buy a Volkswagen bug and you got the light blue one as you start to drive down the road you see a whole bunch of other light blue Volkswagen bugs well it sort of happened with me this year I have met so many middle-aged women that have had to start over same story as mine and it freaks me out like I just I'm like what is this you know why am I attracting this and um and of course you know I encourage them, push forward, you know, we talk, um, you cry, but, um, it's just really wild. And I just, you know, a lot of them feel hopeless because you, you know, you're scared. You haven't been in the workforce for a few years. You know, how are you going to get a job? Jobs going for a job today is totally different than 20 years ago. Um, and so having to get that resume out, you know, it's just, it's a different world now. Yeah, for sure. But I, like you said, just Pulling up your bootstraps and keep going. Gotta push through. Yeah. To hear more about Patty Purdy, visit her on Instagram, so underscore nosy. Thanks for listening.